Hello and welcome to today's program, Your Questions Answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Veneri. We take the questions that you sent us via email. We have discussions about them. Uh, we, uh, we, we, uh, Father Gruner uh, talks about them and gives the answers. Uh, we were at a conference recently where a number of people came up to us and said, yes, we're following this every day. So we're glad you're with us on this. Please continue to watch every day. They change Monday through Friday every day, every, every during the week. So anyway, uh, today's question about our Lord. If Jesus was God and man, but one person, then he had one mind. But as God, he was omniscient, and as a man, he was not. So how could he be omniscient and not omniscient at the same time? It appears to be a contradiction. Okay, well, first of all, um, the person has framed the question incorrectly. So Jesus is true God, Jesus is true man. So this came up <laughs> in some time. This is a famous heresy, but the two wills in our Lord. Well, Jesus is true God and true man, but he only has one will. But in fact is he has two wills. He has a human will and he's a divine will. And he has a human mind and a divine mind. It's the same kind of, this, this other thing has a famous name to it. In fact, the uh, Pope Honorius was excommunicated after he was dead 50 years and a council excommunicated him for not being clear enough on the fact that, yes, we can speak of one mind meaning that I think a certain way. I have a, my mind is made up, it's mm -hmm. one mind, okay. But of course, in our Lord's case, he had two minds, that is, he had a human mind and a divine mind, just like he had a human will and a divine will. So yeah. in the Garden and of Eden- this is, this is all framed within a human nature and a divine and, nature. Yes, yes. But I, and we, of course, we need to, for a person, so he's one person. So first of all, that's the, what, hypostasis is the meaning for person. So the hypostatic union, there's three errors in, in Christology, or in teaching, three main errors. This is a sub-error, if you want, of, mm -hmm. of them, but either one says that Jesus is God and not man, that's a heresy. One says Jesus is man and not God, it's another heresy. And one then is the nature of the union between Jesus' true, true human nature and Jesus. Is it like two bricks, one on top of another? No, it's not that. That, that Jesus is, the human nature has been uh, joined to his divine person. So it is one person, but two natures. So when Jesus says, we ask Jesus, who are you? He could say, I am God. Mm -hmm. And he does. He's right. He could also say, I am man. And it's also true. But if you say, I want a complete answer, I am true God. I am true man. Mm -hmm. I am one person. Okay, that's, so. Bishop uh, Sheen used to say that our Lord had two what's and one who. Yes. Who? What is he? Human. What is he? Divine. Who is he? Jesus Christ. Yeah. True man and true God. But, but, He's one person, and he's, it's not God the Father, it's not God the Holy Ghost, it's God the Son who assumed a human nature. And so, in turn, that uh, as man, he learned things. So, you know, just like we learn things, I mean, you know, now he had him choose knowledge, but still, I mean, he learned how to, he learned to trade. Now, as God, he would know the trade because he knows everything. Mm -hmm. But as man, he actually had the experience of, you know, uh, sawing a piece of wood or, or nailing it or whatever they did carpentry in those days, he learned those things by the way any tradesman would learn things. Mm -hmm. Now, he also knew those things as God. He also knew those things maybe in, in, as man by infused knowledge. He would not be the only person getting infused knowledge in God's, you know, Padre Pio, for example, had infused knowledge. Uh, but most people don't have infused knowledge mm -hmm. other than, you know, what they get with the sacraments as a matter of uh, but my, my point being here that, so when he said then he had one mind, that's the fault right there. No, mm -hmm. he had two minds. He had a human mind, he had a divine mm -hmm. mind. And yes, he knew all things, and, uh, but at the same time, it says about our Lord that he grew in wisdom and knowledge. He grew in wisdom and age be, be, before God and men. Now, he grew in that way, but how did he grow? He grew, I mean, he physically grew, but he also grew in experience. He also grew in, but at the same time, it, can we say he, he, he lacked knowledge? Of it? No. As a person, he knew everything. As a man, he learned things. Okay, so, so in turn, when we say, and these people, this was an era, a big error. I still remember the rage when I was going through theology. Well, Jesus didn't know he was, he was the Messiah. Sure he knew he was the Messiah. He's one person. Mm -hmm. he's, he's one person is conscious of everything. He's conscious of who he is. And he is conscious that he is God and he is man. He's conscious of that at all times as one person. In his human nature, you know, uh, I think St. Thomas would say he had infused knowledge. 
in order for him to function, uh, I mean, God provided, just like God provides for us in certain things, because he's an extraordinary person, I mean, he's God, but as, because he has this human nature and divine nature, God gave him a lot of infused knowledge to his human nature to sort of keep up with his divine nature, so mm -hmm. to speak. To, so, it may, uh, so it's only it's only fitting. St. Thomas has whole uh, sections on this thing. And also, uh, it's interesting because I think this was um, uh, w you know, kind of hammering out this understanding of the hypostatic union was really the first of the major heresies inside the church because yes. people were, because the the early fathers of the church and also um, uh, heretics, even if you know, even, or just people in error. They were, they were trying to work this out, how, how to understand it. Well, the, and there were a lot of false ideas yes. in the first few centuries, and the church well, finally you, hammered it out. To, to give a, uh, a bit of church history, and the history of dogma and history, in the first centuries, they, they were dealing with outside Jewish, um, Jewish quarters. It was all about paganism. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had many, many pagan gods in Rome or in Greece or other parts of the world other than Israel. Paganism was the number one I mean, mm -hmm. the various kinds of paganism. They weren't all united in their, but their, the fundamental theory of paganism is that they, that they worshipped a god, and there were many gods to worship, and that, that the gods might fight away themselves, according to the Greeks, uh, these pagan gods, these, you know. And so that was the first, but when, when it, internally, to try to understand themselves, the first heresy, the first council after the Council of Jerusalem, uh, the first council, the Council of Jerusalem, in, uh, you know, approximately 50 AD, dealt with, relationship of the Catholic Church, the, the Church of Christ, with Judaism. Mm -hmm. That's his primary concern. Mm -hmm. The next Harris Council was in 325 AD, dealt with the hypostatic union of Jesus. How is he? He's true God, he's true man, mm -hmm. and, and, that, uh, and he's one person. And of course, those her they kept dealing with these questions for the next several hundred years in, in, in historianism, a hundred years later, and, and then uh, uh, several t councils. Yeah. These uh, were all called Christological heresies yes. because they were errors regarding the nature of the nature uh, uh, of and Jesus the person Christ. of Christ. Right. Yes. yes. So in turn, uh, this person is now. If you just put this, since God is of one will, He's not divided Himself. You say He's one will, but this was a heresy that goes that it took them. Uh, decades, if not longer, to s sort this out, and even a pope for not standing up for the truth sufficiently mm -hmm. was condemned by his successors for not being clear enough on the subject. So this man is making the error when he's of one mind. Well, if you're speaking, shall we say, imprecisely, one can speak that way. But you're speaking about this very question. You can't speak that way. Mm -hmm. He had a he had a human mind. He had a human soul, and so a human soul has intelligence and has free will. And the, so he's, he's got a true man. As true man, he's got a human soul. As a human soul, the faculties or the powers of the soul are intellect and free will. Otherwise, he's not got a human soul. And so he had a human soul. He had a human, human mind. He had a human... But, and, and just as his will was united to the will, his will as man was united to the will of the Father, nevertheless, he said in the Garden of Eden, you know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. he said, you know, uh, Father, let this cup pass from me but not as I will, meaning I as man, right. but as you will, as mm -hmm. God. And so he distinguished himself. The same thing, he had, he had uh, two minds. I mean, he had his divine mind, he knew everything as God, and at the same time he had a human mind. So, uh, and we remember this too, anytime we say the divine praises. Yes. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and, and true, true man. man. Yes, this, exactly. is, this is, that's kind of the theology in a nutshell. Yes. So, uh, so that's all for uh, today's, uh, today's broadcast, and we will see you on our next edition. Thank you.